The Juno mission actually started in 2006 when we designed and built the spacecraft. We added JunoCam as what we call an outreach camera, which meant that it did not have a responsibility to return scientific data. It had not that much funding, so we had to come up with a very simple design. Because it's on a spinning spacecraft, we had to use an exposure called time-delayed integration that worked with the spin instead of trying to snap a shot really fast before it could smear. We designed the lens to be 58 degrees wide. Now what that wide field of view does for us is that when we're close to Jupiter, we get very high resolution, which is sort of the same as past missions have been but we have it across this really wide angle. And so we can see not only the details of the clouds, but we can see the context of the storm. We publish our JunoCam data on the Mission Juno website because we were labeled an outreach experiment. Our invitation was, okay, we gave you our data. Can you just do us the courtesy of posting what you have come up with using the data? And it's been amazing. We have so many people who have contributed over the years. We have 12,000 uploads on our website. It's just been so rewarding because people do things with our data that I would never think of ever. I mean, the color exaggerations, they range from art really to science. You know, it turns out that we actually see detail better when it's in exaggerated color. And so these things that, you know, might seem like works of art are actually quite valuable uh, to study. Our very, very first flyby of Jupiter, we discovered these cyclones in the polar regions. We found them in the JunoCam images, and nobody knew they were there. It turns out that in the north, there are eight, and they circle around the North Pole. And in the south, there are five, and they circle around the South Pole. By giving this to the public, JunoCam has kind of taken on a life of its own. 